Hey, what's up, everybody? How are you doing? Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you're streaming us from, from the entire world. Salute! You know how we do it every weekend. We always have um, a couple of interviews, podcasts, hosting that based in the fitness, wellness, and game. Um, we always host people talk about their stories, their transformations, and this very Sunday is no different. We have someone. Um, interesting, she has lost a lot of weight, what dangerous keto. So, um, she's here, she's going to be um, sharing with us her story so that you you out there you can pick a leaf or two if you really want to get started with keto. She can give you all the tips that you perhaps need to get started. So, um, I'm not gonna talk a lot because she's already in the building. So, without further ado, I will introduce my guest. Who's gonna share with you everything that you need to know about keto? She's gonna share with you about her journey, her weight loss journey, and all that kind of stuff. But if you have your questions, please, please make sure that you drop them in the chat. I'll be reading your questions straight to her. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please subscribe, like this um, stream. And if you're someone who's coming to watch this live stream when we are no longer live, please remember to leave a comment and a like. But remember, we also have channel memberships. If you want exclusive content, please, please click on that join button. So let me bring in my guest right now. Who? There she is. Hi, how you doing? Hi, I'm good. How are you? We're good. Talk to the people. What are your good names? Hi, my name is Lydia, and I, I have a channel called Ketosis Focus where I chronicle my weight loss journey on the keto diet and i am on a quest to lose 125 pounds and i've lost 90 of them in the past i guess about 19 months and so i'm still trucking towards my goals oh interesting um so where do you hail from and when do you think about you know, starting your weight loss journey yes so i'm actually based in texas in the united states and i <clears throat> started my journey, well, I've always struggled with my weight for many years. And so I've tried literally every single diet known to man, every single diet. And um, I had done something many years ago called the Atkins diet, where I lost a lot of weight doing low carb. And then I got off of it and slowly gained the weight back and then got married and had kids and then gained more and gained more. And then I got to a point where I was like, I needed to do something to get this weight off. And uh, I had heard about keto and I realized that it was very similar to what I was doing on it. So I was like, I could do this. And so July of 2019 is when I decided to embark on this journey and jump both feet into the pool and try and get some results. I wasn't sure if it was gonna work. I had tried keto once before. I'd done it for three months, lost 30 pounds, celebrate it with a cheat day, which turned into a cheat weekend. And then it turned into three months of cheating. And then I gained back 25 of the 30 pounds. And I was very disappointed in myself. <laughs> and I figured keto wasn't going to work for me. Forget it. I'll have to find something else. And then I just found myself coming back to it and saying, well, let me try it again. But this time, not allow myself a cheat day or a cheat weekend or a cheat three months and see how it goes. And so far it's been going great. Oh, perfect. So um, before you even started this, how many pounds um, were you before you started the journey even? So I started my weight loss journey at 265 pounds. I am, um, that was the heaviest I had ever weighed. Even when I was nine months pregnant, I think my heaviest was 228. So it was a way new high for me when I started. And so I knew I had a long journey ahead of me. <laughs> and, uh, and I didn't think I was going to get anywhere near my goals. But I think the more confidence that I got and starting to see the scale move, the more that I started to believe that I could actually do it and get there. And that's kind of how my channel started as well as we're like, okay, I think I'm not gonna fail. So let me go ahead and record the rest of this journey and see how it goes. <clears throat> that's perfect, that's perfect. Um, so I, I wanted to first tell the viewers that experience um, when you are weighing 260 plus pounds, 
And now, what has changed in your entire life? Oh my God, like everything. Everything has completely changed in just losing these 90 pounds. When I was 265 pounds, I was so uncomfortable in my skin. I, I was so, I hated taking pictures. I hid from a camera. If anybody tagged me in a photo at a birthday party or special event, I would untag myself because I hated the way I look. I was unrecognizable to myself. I didn't, I felt swollen. I felt puffy. I felt uncomfortable. It was, I was starting to get like back problems and leg problems and my, um, my weight just really weighed on me and I didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to go anywhere. I didn't want to go for a walk. I didn't want to do anything. Um, it was very depressing. <laughs> it was very depressing. <clears throat> and I could see myself kind of, it's either go down this downward spiral or change the direction. And so now that I've changed the direction, it feels literally like 90 pounds have been lifted off my shoulders and off my body. Like I can breathe again. And that was a huge thing too, because with the way I carried my weight, I carried it in my entire torso and in my face and in my neck. So when I slept, like I was literally choking myself with my fat when I slept, because if I laid on my back, I couldn't breathe and I would snore and I would stop breathing in the middle of the night. And so literally sleeping is better, walking is better, breathing is easier. I could see my face, I could see my eyes now, I could smile more, I don't hide from cameras. I It's just a totally different experience. I'm a totally, it's a totally different life when you drop 100 pounds or 90 pounds and I'm more active. We go for walks, we go to the park with the kids, we run around, we play soccer. Um, it's just 100% different completely. Oh my God, that's interesting. And you talked about something that really touched me and that's the deep apnea. Yeah. And I, I know there are so many people out there, um, you know, facing this kind of challenge. They don't know why they are getting difficulties in breathing, right. shortness of breath at night. And perhaps, you know, <clears throat> will be because of maybe a central obesity and such kind of stuff. So it's interesting how you're now living your life, how you're now happy and such kind of stuff. It's really interesting. And so before we even dive in the topic, what do you think was responsible for your if I may call it overweight or obesity? You know, I, I don't, I, the only thing that I can think of is a string of bad habits. You know, I just kind of got used to having these treats, you know, how some people will treat themselves with, you know, pie or cookies or cake, or they'll treat themselves with going out food at a fast food restaurant. Well, then that became more of a norm than a treat. So instead of having candy on a Saturday at somebody's birthday party, I was having it on a random Tuesday. I was eating pizza on a random Wednesday. I was eating burgers as snacks. I would go through the drive-thru and get a double cheeseburger from McDonald's and just kind of hold that hold me over until dinner. Like it was, it was just kind of used to bad habits. And then more bad habits started to come and more bad habits. And then and then it was like hard to break. And then the more that you do it, you don't realize, you know, I ate the same thing as I did yesterday, but I'm bigger. And I ate the same thing I did last year, but I'm bigger. You don't realize that that's what's happening, that that's the effect of a string of bad habits. Ooh, oh, oh, oh. So I, I actually was thinking like you had a genetic kind of you no know, involvement, but if it was just a bad habit, I think then it can easily be, um, you know, got rid of and, you know, go back to your normal weight. I mean, it's possible to lose um, 90 kilograms, I mean, 90 pounds in just the time you've just said. Yeah. Weight is not attributed to your genetics, I think. Well, I, I started my, my struggle with weight when I was a kid because the bad habits started when I was a kid. I would come home from school and um, it'd be three o'clock in the afternoon and I would grab the cookie jar and I would sit there and eat the cookies as if they're chips watching TV. And then I would eat chips and then I would eat dinner and I would have two or three servings until the food was gone. And then we would have ice cream for dessert every single night. It wasn't a treat. Like these were the habits 
that I was creating for myself at an early age. So as an adult, these are kind of a comfort thing that what I'm used to, like being able to have ice cream whenever I wanted as a dessert and, you know, eating cookies and chips as freely without restriction <laughs> as possible. And that's, you know, kind of how it led to where I was for sure. Oh, oh my God. And um, I'm presuming you are a mother, right? Yes, I'm a mother now. Yeah. So um, are you treating your kids the same way you are treated? You know how going back home and you find all these cookies and all that kind of stuff. What are you doing kind of different this time oh, around? Yeah, it's different. I mean, it, it, it's hard. I, I mean, I can't like take away everything from them and say you're keto now, <laughs> but they definitely exactly. do have keto meals. I don't buy it, we don't buy sodas. We don't buy, you know, cookies on the regular. We don't have dessert every night. If you do want something, we've got fresh berries. We've got sugar-free whipped cream. We've got some yogurt that you can have, frozen yogurt pops, things like that. I mean, I do try and watch their sugar sugar consumption uh, without eliminating it altogether the way I have for myself. But um, but it's definitely affected my family. We're active more when normally we'd sit and watch TV, play video games, or do nothing for hours on end. Now we get up, we go for hours in the park and you know run around and play and you know do stuff like that that we never did before. And then my husband's lost a ton of weight too just by kind of following my lead. Yes. I think he's down like 40 pounds. I'm not sure if I sent you that picture. Um, wow. but he's doing great and now he's on a fitness journey where he's doing pull-ups and he's he's doing all kinds of things every day. So it's just kind of affected everybody in a positive way for sure. Oh, that's very really perfect. I mean, that great, that that transformation didn't just come with it, but it has affected the whole family, which is no interesting. Um, so let me first shout out some people right here that I'm seeing that have joined us. Anita, I see. Thanks for joining us. McKenna, thanks for joining us. Audible Live Scriptures, thanks for joining us. You guys, um, thanks for sparing time. Talk to us and don't be selfish. Just share this stream with everybody out there who needs to listen to this story. Perhaps someone will get inspired from this amazing story by Lydia. Mm -hmm. So um, before we even dive into our topic today, so when you thought about you know transforming your life and losing all this weight, and um, you already told us like you started with Atkins diet. Mm -hmm. So what were the shortcomings of Atkins diet and why did you choose Atkins diet in the beginning before you even go to keto? Well, Atkins came when I was in my early 30s. So it was about, oh, I don't want to age myself, right? It, it's been over 10 years ago when I first did the Atkins <laughs> diet. Um, I had lost 100 pounds in my life before. Um, I, was, I was moving to Los Angeles and I was uh, pursuing an acting career. And so I decided to lose weight for that journey. And I started doing the low fat uh, idea of a diet. So I was like counting calories and I was doing lean cuisines and I was doing all that stuff and uh, running. I started taking up jogging and running three, uh, three miles a day. And I lost the majority of my weight that way. And then when I moved to LA, I, I enrolled in a gym and I heard about this Atkins low carb diet and I decided to try it to kind of push me to the last 20 pounds that I needed to lose. And when I did it, I mean, it was so much, it transformed my body. I was leaner, um, I had more energy. I loved it, I just felt like, I think I did it for six months to a year around that time. And, um, and then just one day, I don't know what happened. I mean, I got to my goal weight. I felt healthy and great. I was working out five days a week. And then one day I, I ordered a burger, but I didn't take the bun off. And then that's kind of how it just slowly started to change. Um, but I didn't have any downfalls of Atkins at the time, aside from everybody else's opinion on the diet. A lot of people would say, that's not a healthy diet. I can't believe your, you know, your cholesterol is going to be through the roof. It's the same arguments that people have with keto now is what I heard back 10 plus years ago when I started the Atkins diet. So I personally didn't feel any effect as far as negative, you know, why I stopped. I just kind of got down a slippery slope and gained the weight back. And so many years later, a new state, kids, family, a new stage of life, I decided to try it again. So it's been good. <laughs> 
haven't had any like it's, it's it's really interesting so let's dive into the topic especially as someone out there who's watching us and they want to try out keto or like what you've tried and has given me given you results so they feel like they want to try um try it as well so what is this ketogenic diet that we are even talking about sure so so what keto diet is is when your body is in ketosis and when your body is in ketosis if you're familiar with the atkins diet i believe that's phase one of the atkins diet where you eliminate all um sugar and keep your carbs below 20 net carbs and you do that i believe in the induction phase of atkins for two weeks because it gets your body in ketosis ketosis so um what the keto diet is is basically keeping your body in ketosis which is a fat burning state and um and basically eating below 20 net carbs. Now there's certain foods you stay away from like the starchy vegetables. I don't eat potatoes. I don't eat white rice or wheat rice. I don't eat wheat bread or white bread or any type of bread other than like maybe a keto approved bread that has lower carbs or higher fiber bread. Um, but I don't do that often at all. Um, and then basically all fruit, uh, except for berries. I eat strawberries and blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, things like that. So um, it's basically keeping it below 20 net carbs a day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Perfect. So um, that is, that's interesting, you know, and because for me coming from the medical perspective of view, you know how is to you know hear about ketosis, uh, there's something we call, um, ketoacidosis, which is basically a medical condition, especially in diabetics and other kind of stuff. And it's, to us, it's an emergency. It's an emergency when it comes to us, especially when you have like um, a diabetic ketoacidosis, some, um, something of that sort. So um, is keto self and who should do keto and who shouldn't do keto? You know, I think anybody who, who feels like they can do it should do it. I mean, I, I also believe that literally any program or diet that you try, is, if you're able to stick with it, it's going to work. So I was able to stick with keto because I happen to love protein and meat and fats <laughs> and veggies and green veggies. I could eat this way forever and it doesn't feel like it's a sacrifice for me. Uh, but there are a lot of people who can't do that. Like I have helped family members and you know friends through this and they're just like I can't get rid of my breads or pastas and they just can't stick with it and it's literally if you can't stick with it then it's not gonna be successful for you um, my whole thing too is like I treat sugar <clears throat> like a drug I treat sugar as addicting as a drug. So I, when I started keto, the first thing I did was eliminate all sugar. And I thought I was eliminating all sugar until I started reading labels. And then you don't realize how much food that you buy at the store is pumped with sugar that shouldn't even have sugar in it. Like a regular, you know, slice of bacon or, or you know, turkey slice or something like that will have sugar in the ingredients. So I started paying attention to the ingredients and treating it as it my addictive drug like i don't want a trace of it in my system or else i won't be able to kick this addiction so the more that it's out of my system the less i crave it and then the more successful that i will become so that's normally the first step in in my opinion is eliminating that sugar <clears throat> um so so um talking about sugar um let's talk about sugar and cravings how are you able to handle the cravings from sugar because I understand sugar is really addictive and such kind of stuff. So how are you able to completely eliminate sugar and deal with the cravings? Sure. The only way that I was able to fight those cravings was literally eliminating all of it by reading those labels. Because in the beginning, when I did it for those first three months and I lost those 30 pounds, I wasn't really reading labels. I was just kind of doing net carbs. I was doing something called lazy and dirty, you know, where it was like, hey, as long as it's under 20 net carbs, I'm fine. But the problem was, is I was looking forward to a cheat day so I can finally have that cookie or that brownie or that slice of pizza. And then that's that that sugar craving never went away. But when I started reading the labels, turning everything over and being mindful that that bacon had sugar in it, so I'm not going to buy it or that turkey has sugar in it. I'm not going to buy it. 
once I started making those hard decisions, it was 100%, it was a game changer. It was 100% a game changer because I no longer craved sugar at all. People would be in front of me eating desserts at a restaurant and I had no desire to taste it, to order one, nothing. I mean, it felt so amazing to not be powerless against that when before it was like, oh my God, this is killing me. Let me just have a little taste. Like now it's like, no, I have no desire to even take a little taste of that. And, and this brings me to, you know, a saying where they say out of sight, out of mind. And so they're saying, if you, want to get, if you really want to get rid of sugar, don't buy it. Don't let it be in your house. So when it's out of sight, perhaps it's out of your mind. You're even not going to think about it. So I think that's something to really take serious. So if you really want to eliminate sugar, especially yeah. fat, don't buy, don't put it anywhere in your house. Yes. And it's easier to do that when you're by yourself or when you're like with another spouse who's supporting you. It's completely easy to go, okay, that's it. No more sugars entering this house. But you know, when you get kids, I mean, Valentine's Day, this yesterday they came home with bags of candy and sugar from exchanging Valentine's Day or Valentine's and like none of that. Like before I would be like, ooh, you have a chocolate? Can I, you know, let me grab one of these and save it for later but like now it doesn't even appeal to me anymore it's it's like i broke an addiction it's weird it's i see a donut and it's like oh i don't want it i don't want it so it, i feel powerful now against it even if it's in my face but yeah we don't buy it so it's not yeah, um, yeah exactly right now i feel like you really have that willpower to you know resist all these cravings and all that kind of stuff I think, that, and like the way you started with, like you did a lot of yo-yo dieting in the beginning, and yeah. so I think you've learned lessons, and you really um have evolved to that strong willpower, you know, to keep you going. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, it was definitely. I was taking it step by step. You know, I, I wasn't looking at I needed to lose 125 pounds. I was just going, how much can I lose this month? And let me weigh myself on the first and then weigh myself the following month on the first and see how I did. And if I lost 10 pounds, then let me see if I can either do those same 10 pounds the next month or maybe I can push it and do more or something, you know. And so I was always just trying to challenge myself every goal of the way. And um, and then before you knew it, I was at 90 pounds. So, and it's funny because as I got closer to my goal, my original goal was 150 pounds. Like I wanted to weigh 150 pounds. So I started off at 265 and I started going towards that direction. I think when I got to about 190, 185, I was like, let me push that further. Let me go down to 140 because, you know, these charts are telling me I'm five foot two. They're telling me I'm supposed to be. 137 to 142 or something like that. So I was like, I'm gonna lower it and just see if I can reach it. I mean, if I can get anywhere between 140 to 150, then I will call that a successful <laughs> achievement for me. And and I would say it also comes from you know how you set your realistic expectations yeah. and you know having that strong why why we wanted to you know get to 150. So you have something that kept pushing you, pushing you every other day. And I think that's why, I, I mean, out, um, throughout the whole journey, you've developed that resilience to actually, you know, keep going. And I think it also depends on the foundation that you said. So what's important to people who are watching us right now, it's important to ask yourself, why do you want to lose weight and set realistic expectations? You know, it's funny that you talk about the why, because I remember in the very beginning, you know, I have a journal that I would write in what my whys were. And one of them was to fit into regular size clothes because I was only limited to plus size sections of the store or plus size stores only. And I remember the day where I transitioned from the plus size to the regular size, whatever you would call it, the normal mainstream size. And I remember going to a store and being literally overwhelmed with me reaching my why, because it was like, now I don't have to just shop in this one rack of clothes. Like I literally can have these 20 racks of clothes to choose from. And it was a little overwhelming for somebody who was limited to one rack. 
all this time for many, many years to now have a plethora of choices. So like, be careful for your why, because you just might get it, right? And that's what I was worried about. I was like, oh my gosh, now that I've hit it, what am I going to do with all these choices? <laughs> It, it really sounds so interesting. You know, your journey is just so amazing and it really inspires you know. That's why I really, really thought about having you. And if I really remember, I think we met on Sarah's channel because her story too is amazing. So when I met you there, I was like, perfect, perfect, perfect. So there's this question that, you know, I'm confused most people. What's the clear difference between low carb diet and a ketogenic diet? You know, I, I, I'm constantly learning about keto and the differences of keto and how everybody ketos differently. So I'm always a work in progress with, with learning my information. From what I understand, and I mean, you may know more or somebody else may know more. From what I understand, the main difference between the low carb diet versus the keto diet is the amount of fat and the percentages and the macros. Um, I believe a low carb diet is basically lazy keto where you don't have to track all of your macros. You just keep it under 20 net carbs and you're good. While a keto diet is looking at the percentages of your protein, your fat and your carbs throughout your day. And when I first got on, this is one of the things that confused me about the keto diet. Where are the macros? Where are the tracking? Where are the percentages? Like, okay, I'm supposed to eat 70% of my calories a day from fat like how am i supposed to do that like i'm literally going to be eating bacon and you know butter all day long it doesn't make sense um and then i was like am i supposed to hit these numbers like if it says i'm at 90 grams of protein how do i do i hit that number do i go past it do i go below it like i was so confused in the beginning as well um, so I think it's just, it's educating yourself a lot and understanding of the general consensus too about tracking and about those macros is you always want to hit your protein number. You definitely don't want to go over on your carbs and then your fat is just there to use as a lever to keep you full. And that was one of the confusing things when I started because I thought I was supposed to eat all of my fat. So if it says 170 grams of fat, I've got to figure out how to get. And that's another thing too, is understanding percentages versus do I weigh literally 170 grams of fat on a scale and eat that? Or how does that work? So once you get the carb manager app or any kind of tracking app and you input it, then you start to realize kind of how it all is. It's a puzzle piece. It's trying to find the right combinations of fat and protein and macros for your day, you know, for this process, for your body to be, I guess, optimized <laughs> for it. So I, I don't know. I mean, it's, maybe I explained it very confusingly, but that's kind of yeah. how. Yeah. No, I think um, um, there's something here that I picked, especially when it comes to protein and fat. It seems like if someone is more on, um, on a low carb diet, yes, they are keeping maybe their carb intake to perhaps 30 grams, you know, per day. But then they are looking at optimizing their protein on the other side. And for keto, they are going maybe below 30 carbs per day, but they are looking at, you know, having a high fat diet, high fat diet, and of course, item bit of protein. So that's what I'm picking. And it's very, very important. It's a big difference. And even within the keto community, there's still you know conversations and arguments and and you know people on different sides of the spectrum because there's definitely some people that say pile on the fat eat all the fat get the fattiest cuts of meat you know do all of that and then there's these people that say um get leaner cuts of meat and add your fat and don't even add a ton of fat because you want your body to be burning the fat that's on your body not the fat that you're intaking so it can be very confusing to somebody who is starting keto and it can be very overwhelming with the different types of information that's out there. So for my 19th, um, Yes, I absolutely. There's the, the something that I made somewhere, um, the difference between fat burning and fat loss, how most people are actually confusing the two. The thing that actually the two are together. For example, if someone is on a high fat diet, yeah. Their goal is actually to lose fat. Right. Will they get results faster? So you taking in a high fat diet, does it equate to actually fat burning? Right. And fat loss um, subsequently. So 
there, there are a lot of questions um, um, exactly because if you look at fat, fat is a substrate as well, like sugar, like something else. So some people actually think if you're on a high fat diet and your body has switched, for example, if I believe you're right now like you, you're metabolic or flexible, I think you're good. Your body has transitioned from burning sugar to actually burning fat now. Yeah. So I think that now the fact that you're fueling your body with a lot of fat, it's actually instead of using the fat that you're giving it, not losing the fat that you're already having on your body. So there's that kind of, you know, um, sentiment here and there and that kind of stuff. And that's why research is evolving every other day. Yeah, it, it's, um, it's definitely a lot of information out there that, you know, can be quite confusing when you're just starting for sure. Like when I first started keto, I didn't track anything. I mean, I literally did meat and veggies and butter and fat. And I had ribeyes with blue cheese and cooked in butter with, you know, broccoli and cream spinach. And I would eat all of this fat and protein without a care in the world until the scale stopped moving. And when the scale stopped moving, then I was like, oh, hmm, how many calories am I eating? How much fat am I intaking? And then I started to start caring about how much I'm intaking and realizing, like, oh my God, I probably was eating way over my calories. I was eating way over all my fat. Let me reel it in and see my results that way now that the scale's not moving. So you have to you know, adjust as you, you're on your journey to kind of help you get along. <laughs> I, I, and you know what's interesting is how our body works because if you're trying to lose weight and you're losing weight faster, your body will try as much as it can't actually resist. That's why you have to get you no know, stores and such kind of stuff because your body does not want you to lose weight. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So when you're actually losing weight, you're going to it somewhere and your body says no, no. So you know start raising out of counter majority hormones to weight loss and such kind of stuff so that you can actually stop losing weight. So you have, you know, pushing out of energy. You have to have that willpower to make sure that you actually have a consistent caloric deficit. Otherwise, that's when most people start quitting. And I'm happy that even when your scale was not moving, you really had to devise on how to, you know, now focus on counting your macros and make sure that you're taking the right macros and um, you kept, you know, losing weight. Because usually when the scale stops moving, most people throw their hands up in the air and just say, okay, it's not working for me anymore. Next, let's go on to the next diet or something. You know, uh, I was too far into this process when my scale stopped moving. I mean, I was like, okay, I know it's working. I just got to figure out now what's the holdup. And that's when I decided to start tracking. I mean, it's not my favorite thing to do in the world. I hate having to weigh and measure, but honestly, pulling out tablespoons and scales really do give you an exact amount of what you're intaking instead of a rough estimate, you know? So now, you know, you have two tablespoons of creamer in your coffee and not, you know, half a cup as you're pouring. So it's helpful for you to see <laughs> as well, what you're putting in your body. Yeah, it's really, it's really interesting. And um, I always tell people like, if you're not tracking your macros and you're getting results, perfect, keep mm -hmm. doing it. But if you feel your journey is not moving, change something. Maybe try tracking your, my, your macros and see if there's a difference. Because some of us here will be here thinking, okay, I know I'm eating a deficit, but in actual sense, you're actually eating a surplus. And your body just somewhere says no. Right, yeah. And, and it's, it's funny because now that I'm tracking and I'm aware, my meals are smaller and it's not even it doesn't affect me. I'm not feeling hungry. I'm not feeling deprived. I'm just was so used to eating a large quantity of food that it was an adjustment for me to go, okay, well, see, you don't need that huge meal. Like you can be fine with this amount of food. Cause I was doing OMAD for a while too, one meal a day. And so I would basically eat all of my calories in that one meal. So I would have one giant meal of, you know, 15, 16, 1800 calories, who knows how big, you know, that meal was. Uh, so I was getting used to eating these larger meals. And so now that I'm breaking it up into two smaller meals, I'm getting used to eating a smaller amount. And I think for my lifestyle moving forward and maintaining my weight, I think it's going to be good to get used to eating smaller instead of bigger. 
Sure. Oh, perfect. So um, let's look at the best cab, cab summer can actually um, start on when they are, you know, starting on their journey. What are those best keto foods that, um, best keto foods, recipes that come on can actually get started with that you've been yourself doing and you're seeing amazing results? So for, I mean, most people might get sick of bacon and eggs for breakfast every morning, but that was... It's, it's literally the perfect uh, amount of protein and fat and zero or one carb or very low carbs too. So I would eat bacon and eggs every morning, but in different ways. Like if I do two over easy eggs, bacon, maybe a slice of avocado on the side uh, or make an omelet, two egg omelet with cheese and avocado and put some avocado or cheese and bacon and put avocado, or sour cream or salsa on it. Um, or I would skip breakfast and have my lunch instead. And that normally, I, I keep it very basic. I would say pick a protein, whether it's chicken, beef, turkey, fish, with a protein, then pick a green veggie and, and go with like broccoli, Brussels sprouts, green beans, um, spinach, you know, some kind of green veggie and, and have the fat if you need it to cook the meat in or, you know, add to your veggie. But like, I wouldn't put, if I do a huge salad, I know me and pouring on that dressing is going to add double the amount of calories in, in just that salad dressing. So I try to steer away from huge salads like Cobb salads because the bacon and the cheese and the egg and all of that is keto, but it can be very calorie dense. So I'm just mindful of those things. I started doing chaffles lately. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's kind of everywhere right now, but I got a little mini waffle maker and I can make my own breads and I make breakfast sandwiches out of that basically with just cheese and egg. Um, and then there is one that's like a Wonder Bread recipe that has some almond flour in it. I don't do it often, but if I want um, a sandwich on the weekend, I can make my own bun in the waffle chaffle maker. I've um, done some some recipes in the air fryer that don't call for deep frying or breading it in flour. So we would bread it in pork rinds, or we would bread it in almond flour, and then put it in the air fryer, and it'll crisp up as if it was like fried chicken or fried fish. Um, what are some other ones? We we keep it very basic. <laughs> keep it very basic. Um, and now we still do steaks and Brussels sprouts. But my steaks now, I weigh them out to make sure I'm not getting the 12 ounce steak. Maybe do a six to eight ounce steak, depending on, on if it's dinner or lunch or what we are. Um, but basically protein, green veggie, and a fat to keep you full. Uh, and that's not even a necessary. Like, I mean, if you want the fat, you add the fat. <laughs> so. Oh, perfect. I think that that was someone who's watching us, maybe you for the first time, they have never heard about keto. I think they have gotten what an idea what keto is and maybe how they can get started. So let's look at the beverages. So which kind of best beverages that are preferable that you'd actually want someone to take or you yourself what you've been taking to, you know, get these amazing results? So the um, beverages I stick to is literally water. I drink water as my main beverage. I do have coffee in the morning. And what I started doing was putting a scoop of collagen in my coffee. And then I switched from heavy whipping cream now, because I used to do heavy whipping cream in the very beginning of my journey. Uh, but now that I'm more conscious of my calories and intake, I'm, I switched to half and half. Um, so I do drink coffee. And um, sometimes maybe two cups a day. I'm not sure. You could drink hot tea. There are some calorie-free, carb-free drinks out there. You just have to pay attention to those ingredients. I know um, you're doing dirty keto and you don't mind certain ingredients or they don't affect your body so much, like quickly rose or something. People drink, uh, some people drink like zero, things like that. I don't drink that stuff. I drink bang. <laughs> Uh, but I don't drink like Coke Zero or Diet Cokes or anything like that. Um, I know some people drink like um, Powerade that are sugar-free, calorie-free Powerades and things like that. But again, it, if, if it has a laundry list of ingredients on the back, I stay clear of it. Oh, one of the things I did do, and this might be very helpful for those who can't drink straight water, 
is to get the mayo drunk and add that to your water. I mean, that's zero calories as well. And you can squeeze some lemonade or some, you know, flavoring in water and it'll help you get through that cup of water if you don't like drinking straight water. I happen to love it, so. <laughs> Yeah, you have to you have to emphasize actually that the be best beverage out there is just water. I mean, cold free. Yeah. Yes. Sometimes you can try out stuff like coffee. Coffee is also cold free, and you know, boosting your metabolism and other kind of stuff. Green tea, I think, it's perfect as well. As long as something doesn't contain any kind of calories, I think. But then the don't be food out there, you know, with Coke Zero and all that kind of colors because I know. Yes, they're showing you Coke Zero, but what makes what makes them yeah. taste much? Most likely it is sugar, but they're hiding it maybe behind another name that you perhaps know because I know sugar is sold um in now in the world under different brands' names that you people out there cannot even understand. So I think water, water, green tea, perfect. Yes, yes, definitely. I steer away. I used to be a diet coke drinker. I used to drink Diet Coke all the time. And once I realized I needed to get rid of Splenda and Sweet and Low, that sucralose, then I realized, oh man, that's what is in Diet Coke. It's like, how am I gonna do that? And so it was it was hard for me in the beginning, but you know, the more that you get rid of it, the easier it is to go on with your life without it. So, you know, it's always gonna be rough the first couple of weeks when you're giving up something that you're used to, but the more time that you Bend on that path, the easier it is to walk that path, if that makes sense. So definitely give it a try and get rid of some of that stuff. <clears throat> Perfect. Actually, someone someone asked me, like, can they take alcohol while they are in their keto? So let me pick your your opinion on that. Man, that has been one of my biggest um, obstacles on this on this uh, journey because I'm a wine drinker. I love drinking, you know, glasses of wine, even on a random Wednesday or Tuesday, I would pour myself. I mean, I got kids, so, you know, mothers and parents out there know what it's like to need to drink in the middle of the week or something. So it was one of my biggest um, changes and growing spots too, is trying to figure out how can I incorporate this into my diet? Obviously I've had to limit it a lot. Um, so I don't drink it nearly as often, but if I do want an alcoholic beverage, I mean, I would do a red wine because I believe there are about three to four carbs, a small glass, but then that's something that I have to be mindful of. Like. I'll blow my entire day if I have too many glasses of wine. Uh, another thing that I have switched to is whiskey. Like the liquors, the hard liquors have zero carbs. It's what you mix into it that is the problem. And most people will mix like if they're gonna have a rum daiquiri drink. Well, that daiquiri mix is full of sugar. You know, if they're gonna have a whiskey drink and Coke. Well, that Coke is full of sugar. So it's that mixture that you have to be mindful of. So I've started doing, um, well, I, I like the bangs. I don't have them all the time, but if I was to do this, I'll do a splash of bang. I won't do an entire can of bang. So I'll do like, let's say a whiskey, you know, shot of whiskey in a cup and I would do a splash of bang and then fill the rest of the glass up with sparkling water, like a flavored, like a lime sparkling water or something. And that's kind of been my beverage of choice if I'm going to have an alcoholic beverage throughout this entire journey. I don't do it often anymore, but. <laughs> Perfect. And uh, um, on this one, I've talked about red wine. Why um, a little bit of red wine is okay, perfect. Actually, there's, um, there are such papers out there that actually tell us that, um, Red wine moderation can actually boost your fat burning, if you get what I'm saying. But yeah. I keep it as moderation because it contains certain substance called resveratrol or something and increases, I think, the amount of your brown fat and all that kind of stuff. And it's really can, you know, amplify your fat. Please understand the moment you start on alcohol, most of you end up, you know, um, taking it excessively. So, if you want to stay out of, um, uh, if you want to stay away from alcohol, please wait and go. But if you still you can't do away without it, a little bit of red wine, I think it's okay because the research backs it. Yeah, it depends on how much. That's for sure. If you have one glass, it's you know, 
definitely can fit into your diet, but if you drink the whole bottle, well then, you know, <laughs> it's definitely gonna blow your, your diet for that day, you know, and, and slow on the scale. Like I've realized every time I drank on a weekend, my scale went up, you know, it, it, it definitely didn't continue on the loss, you know, pathway. So I either stayed the same or I went up. And so then I started to kind of have to weigh what meant more to me, you know, continuing on this journey, seeing a loss or drinking on the weekend. If I drank on the weekend, well, then basically give up the loss for that week. And that's kind of the give and take that I had to do. So. Yeah. Mm, thanks so much. A couple of people here, Leia's Life. Thanks for joining in. La Kini Natural Beauty. Thanks for joining. Audible Life Scriptures. You're still here. Thanks for sticking around. There's so many people in the live chat here. So um, let's look at um, the longevity. Um, how long can someone stay on keto? You know, it, it's funny that you asked that because I remember my son had asked me, when you get off of keto, can we, you know, go eat at this restaurant or have make brownies or something like that? And it was like, there is no getting off of it. Like for me, this is my way of eating forever. Like, I mean, I, if I go back to eating the way that I used to eat, then I'm going to go back looking the way I used to look and I'll gain back that way. So it's got to be something that I can do moving forward. So, you know, I'm going to eat this way forever. I mean, I'm not going to say I'm never going to ever get off of it. I don't anticipate a reason to ever get off of it and to go back to that way of eating, not even a special occasion. Maybe it's more similar where the choices are very limited, um, but I don't plan on keeping that as my way of you know, eating as far as getting off of it, for sure. Oh, perfect. And, um, there's somebody in the right in the live chat. Um, they are called um, Revive Fitness Services. Who's that? That's my husband. <laughs> <laughs> I saw I, I saw it coming. Um, I mean, um, there's an, an interesting message that he dropped. Um, um, he's saying Lydia has adopted the role of a keto coach in my family. Oh, uh, yes. For that. Yes, I've been inspiring. Like my sister-in-law is now doing keto and she's, you know, got a lot of questions. And what she does is she follows my Instagram and she, she makes whatever I made the day before, she makes it the next day and eats that. She's like, I'm not doing anything but copying her. So whatever she's eating, you know, for breakfast, I'll make that tomorrow or something. So, you know, she's been sticking with it, I think for three weeks now. So, you know, people, people are doing it. I think our, um, our uncle and our aunt are doing it as well. And they've seen like 20 pound loss in a month. I mean, wow. they're definitely seeing success out there. So that's good to be an inspiration for sure. Yeah, you're absolutely an inspiration. You're absolutely an inspiration. Um, so let's talk about, um, the sustainability of keto. Um, how have you been able you know, to sustain it? Because someone would think, is this keto thing really expensive? Can I manage it? If someone out there, they really want to try it. Should they think like, you need to you know, have some bags prepared for that or it's really something that is affordable? You know, it, I, I don't see it as more expensive than a regular standard American diet. I mean, the food that I used to buy before, I mean, it would be boxes of, you know, crackers and snacks and sweets and junk. And so instead of buying that stuff, I'm basically moving that money to more protein, more fresh veggies. Uh, we definitely buy way more vegetables and salad and cucumbers and things like that, that we never used to buy before. Uh, and our pantry stuff, like, you know, cereal and snacks and stuff, you know, they're in there forever. Like I have to throw them out because nobody uses them. So it's not necessarily expensive. You can do it affordably. There's definitely videos out there that can teach you how to do keto on a budget, like how to meal plan for a week under, you know, $40 per person or something. So, I mean, we do, we do like chicken thighs, we do ground beef. Uh, another thing that we do that I've seen be very affordable is if you buy like either a roast or something that you make in the slow cooker or the instant pot or something and it's a big let's say four pound piece of roast well you can eat all of that and meal plan for the entire week so you just make it once on sunday 
and then portion it out. And then you basically meal plan for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday dinners, you know? So there's definitely ways to do it where you don't feel like you have to be in the kitchen cooking every single day, all day long, you know, and coming up with these elaborate, you know, meals like stuffed chicken breast wrapped in bacon or something like that. You can keep it simple, just do chicken and broccoli, just do a beef and a veggie. And, you know, it won't be expensive or complicated at all. Yeah, perfect. And I, 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 you know, what's so funny is people who are living, you know, the other side of life, and that's, you know, like how you used to live your life. Um, they couldn't imagine, like, they still imagine, like, living such kind of life you're living right now is actually expensive. And yet, while they are living now, it's <laughs> quite expensive. Because I understand this thing, um, KFC, visiting McDonald's, you really spend a lot of, you know, dollars there. But if you come and try to, you know, buy these healthy fats, veggies and all that, you actually realize it's actually um, less expensive. 100%. 100%. We don't even go out to eat nearly as much as we used to. We used to go out to eat like three times a week at restaurants and fast food. And now we stay home, obviously with the, you know, everything that's going on, but we stay home and we cook and I cook a lot more than I used to. And we save so much money for not going out to eat. And it's a lot healthier and it's a lot cheaper and it's better for you. So it's, it's really interesting. So guys, no excuses for not trying out this yeah. kind of diet. I mean, don't give an excuse like it's expensive. I know it's a little bit inconveniencing, you know, transitioning from the standard American diet to, you know, now going to these all kinds of diets. But the moment you get there, trust me, you, you will actually love it. You will actually love it. Yeah. I wasn't a cook before. Like, I, it's not like I came up with fancy meals to cook and, and I loved being in the kitchen. I wasn't. I was a basic person, <laughs> you know, basic cooking. And so, Keto has allowed me to enjoy making my own food. Uh, and if I can do it, I mean, my God, if I can do it, if I can cook meals for myself, if I could lose 90 pounds on this journey, literally anybody can. Because I remember being at the starting gate of this and watching other people saying, if I can do it, you can do it. And I'm like, mm, yeah, right. You probably have more willpower than me. You probably have more money than me. You probably have this or that than me. Like I didn't believe it until I was doing it. And then, then I was like, wow, this really is, if you put your mind to it, because it is a mind thing. It's a mind switch that you have to believe you can do it. You have to want it and you have to put your mind to it. And anything that you put your mind to, whether it's weight loss or business or anything, anything that you put your mind to, you can achieve it. You just have to stay focused and committed to it. And that's what I did. Perfect, perfect. That's good news. So still, still talking about um, a little bit of the foods, let's look at, let's look at um, frying your foods because um, we need to, be, to give people, you know, the healthier choices. So what are the best options that you're using to, you know, fry your foods and maybe the healthy fats that they should focus on? Because um, knowing that actually keto, you focus on eating a high fat diet, it's put in a state of ketosis all the time. Mm -hmm. I've switched the oils that I use. So I used to cook a lot in like canola oil um, or uh, gosh, what other oils did I cook? Mainly canola. And I switched out of that. I don't do vegetable oil, none of that. Like I'm very, I'm very particular about the oils that I use. So I use avocado oil and I use olive oil. And then I use <clears throat> grass fed, grass finished butter. Uh, in, in here it's called Kerrygold butter. And I'll use that. There's coconut oil that I'll use as well. There's ghee, clarified butter. So there's only certain things that I'll use to like pan fry. I don't really deep fry anything. I mean, I have an air fryer now. So that kind of takes care of all of that. It's a healthier way to have fried food. Uh, but like I said, if we were to do anything that would be considered breaded, which is in the pork rinds or the almond flour, we put it in the air fryer and it still gives it that crunch as if you, you know, deep fry it in oil like you're used to doing. Exactly. And um, it's, it's really important to emphasize this, actually, that seed oils, are, uh, they are actually bad for you because I know people um, in industries, they pump in out of hydrogen and other kind of stuff. And it's not good. Actually, it's one of the fewer for insulin resistance. So 
it's very important that yes, you might be eating all the good fats and all that, but you're deep frying them with all these bad seed oils. So it's important that you based on the healthier options, just talked about avocado oil. I mean, that's like a magician, olive oil, coconut oil. So you have options out there that you can actually use which are healthier. So please take note of that, especially about the seed oils. And I see a lot of people use bacon fat as well. So if they are to make bacon and they keep that fat to use in cooking other things, I, I don't because like I said, now I'm trying to watch the fat intake that I'm having just to kind of, you know, navigate a little bit more towards my goals. Uh, but that's definitely an option as well. People keep it on their counsel, the bacon fat you know, to use as a fat. Oh, perfect. So apart from the keto diet, let's look at training. How are you able to incorporate, of course, keto diet and now doing some exercise? So for about 18 months on my journey, I didn't do anything. Like I didn't exercise. I didn't go for, I mean, maybe I would go for walks towards the end of last year. I didn't do anything. And it wasn't until last month where we joined a gym. And now I'm incorporating fitness and exercise into my routine, which is something that I literally have not done in over 10 years. It's been a very, very, very long time since I stepped foot in a gym. Uh, and I just didn't feel comfortable. I mean, when you're at 265 pounds, I, I felt you know uncomfortable going into a gym and trying to get on a treadmill or anything like that. Uh, and, and now I feel like, you know, obviously it's just working on my fitness and my health and pumping that heart a little bit more and doing the cardio. So I'm this week, I had to take a week off from being sick this whole week. But last week and the weeks before, when I started in January, I had been into this routine of about four to five days at the gym. And I would do about an hour, an hour and a half, depending, uh, depending on what I'm doing there. And I would do at least 30 to 40 minutes of cardio a day, usually on a treadmill. But there's, you know, all these other cardio machines that I want to explore as well. But I'm comfortable with the treadmill right now. And then I'm weight training. I'm doing um, arms one day or upper body one day, lower body the next day. I'm doing abs every single day because that's always been a trouble area for me is my midsection. So I'm always trying to just kind of get stronger, build muscle and kind of tone up and and elevate my fitness level, I guess, is my goal for 2021 this year, for sure. Are you there? I think I may have lost you. <laughs> All right. I will keep talking until you pop up, <laughs> just in case I'm still live. I can't see any of the questions, so I won't be able to, to ask any of them. But um, but yeah, so it's something that I wasn't um, used to doing before, which was working out. I'm totally doing uh, now. And, you know, it's new. It's new for me. I do get uh, enjoyment of buying workout clothes now and buying, you know, pants and tops and whatnot just to, you know, get me motivated to go to the gym and, and, uh, and exercise, <laughs> all that good stuff. Okay, I'm still on. Okay, with everything like exercise and diet, it has to be your way of living. That's quite been okay. I'm just looking to, <laughs> I'm just looking to see because I think I lost him. But, but uh, I'll just keep talking. So you guys and I and I've got the live chat now. So if you have any questions, I'll uh, I'll answer them as well. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm not I'm not you know training for a competition or anything. I'm just trying to gain muscle now, and. Um, and I make it a habit, you know, just like I said, bad habits, you know, a string of bad habits can can become a habit and become your way of life. So now I'm trying to develop good habits that will become my way of life, like, you know, eating healthier and exercising and all that good stuff. Um, yes, I did do my first pull up yesterday. Um, my husband just pointed that out in the chat. I, upper body strength has always been a thing for me. So I, a pull up has always been non-existent in my world and in my life. And uh, we have one of those pull up things that my kids actually am loving. And, uh, and I tried it out for the first time and realized I really do have to work on my upper body strength because 
because I am definitely weaker than I thought I was up here. So I'm working on all of that. I'm definitely working on all of that. All right, let's see. Did I get in any questions? Yes, water is the best drink. Uh, there you are. And fine. <laughs> I thought I lost you. Let me out here open myself. <laughs> This was embarrassing. This what happened. Um, you know, I'm from a third world country, so I must admit that you know, African and power and all that kind of stuff. So power went off, and of course, I'm using Wi-Fi, so it had hey, to. Oh, you know me. I can talk. <laughs> I'll talk. I can talk for however long. The camera is rolling, apparently. So I hope I didn't have too much of a dead silence for those watching. <laughs> oh yeah. Thanks for staying there. Thanks for staying there for me. Otherwise, oh my God, it's a little bit embarrassing, but thanks for um, keeping there. It's okay. It's good. It's good. Yes, so we're still talking about your keto and exercise and how you are able to you know, incorporate everything together. Yes, so, so I'm developing new habits now of hitting the gym uh, as well. And so I've been trying to go four to five times a week, and I do cardio every day, 30 to 40 minutes. And then I do uh, alternating days of upper body and lower body. And I do abs every day. My midsection is always been a problem for me. So I try to kind of just build muscle, build stamina, to work on my fitness and, um, and kind of reshape my body as much as I can now that I'm getting closer to the whole weight. So let's look at the exercises you focus on, especially when you are reaching the gym. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so, um, so my husband actually works on fitness equipment. And so he knows everything. He's been doing that for years. He knows everything about fitness equipment. So our first day at the gym, he was like my personal trainer. I had to ask him, like, how do you do this machine? And, you know, how do I set up, you know, the, the weights for this? And so he would show me how to do everything. And now I just kind of I get my, I get into my routine. I'm a creature of habit. And so I, I have my routine every time and I'm working on, you know, building muscle and strength in my upper body, building muscle in my lower body and trying to, to tighten up that midsection. So I'm, I'm hitting all of the machines basically. Um, I don't know what else. <laughs> I don't know what else I can yeah, say. Yeah. After, um, uh, um, because I understand resistance training is really key when especially it comes to, you know, fat loss. And remember, the more muscle you build, um, muscle is metabolically active, it burns more calories and all that kind of stuff. So if you're really um, trying to add on a little bit of some fresh on your body, then, I mean, the next few months, few years, you're going to be looking awesome because I understand muscle can actually burn, 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 burn more calories. But on top of that, you really don't want to lose weight and then become like a stick. You really want to keep with definition and all that kind of stuff. It's really, really key that you're actually going to the gym. Yes, I'm bummed that I was sick this week and I had to take a week off. I haven't gone since last Friday, uh, but I'm looking forward to being able to go back into the gym. Uh, we do have a brand new treadmill here at home. So I like that even if the weather is bad or it's late and I didn't get to work out early that I'm able to jump on that treadmill. We've got resistance bands and we've got you know, kettlebells. And we've got a few things here at home that we can do in case we are not able to hit the gym. Uh, but it's been good. And I'm, like I said, I'm trying to develop new habits. I'm trying to make it a way of life for me where I'm getting this exercise in. And I've got like my steps going. Like that was number one was like trying to get 10,000 steps on my watch every day, whether that means walking around my house in loop or going outside up and down to the mailbox and back, whatever I need to do to get these steps turned, you know, that was a good starting point for me, for sure. Oh, perfect. What haven't you talked about, Keto? Anything that you feel we haven't talked about and you want to tell people? Um, you know, my blood pressure was an issue when I started. And my number one why or my number two why up there was getting off medication, you know, because I have taken blood pressure medication for a few years now because of my weight. 
Um, so I, I bought a cuff and I'm able to check my blood pressure whenever I want. And so it's good to see before my medication that my blood pressure is actually lowering. I mean, it's going into a healthy range. And so I think the more that I'm able to, to keep that number consistent, the more likely I'll be able to get off that medication, which is going to be a huge accomplishment for me. Um, so definitely I'm seeing an overall change in, in myself, my body, not just on the outside, but on the inside as well. Um, my blood work gets done every three months. Like I check everything to make sure that I'm on a healthy path for sure. Oh my God. That sounds interesting, especially about, you know, um, um, ketogenic diet, improving your blood pressure. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. I understand most like even before I started, you could have been maybe pre-diabetic, which I think right now your insulin resistance is perhaps reversed or it's being right. reversed, which is perfect. I don't know how your triglycerides are, your HDLs, your LDLs, but I think they are getting better, which is quite, quite, quite interesting. Yes, it's, it's, it's very interesting to see those numbers flip. And even like the cholesterol, even seeing those numbers change and and what you're thinking about a keto diet and you're like, oh, obviously your cholesterol is going to be through the roof or your, you know, your fat, your triglycerides or something. Um, but seeing how your body is changing, I mean, your my numbers were horrible when I first started at 265 pounds, like everything was off. And so now that I'm able to shrink and lose and get healthier, everything is improving. Everything's changing. Oh my God, some of my would actually think like that's like, you know, a magic, but it's not actually magic. It's all about, you know, um, think about yourself and trying to transform your life and all that kind of stuff. So as you can see, her blood pressure has improved, her, her HD has, uh, has improved, LDL, cholesterol, and all that kind of stuff. It has actually improved. Yeah. So it, Quite interesting with the ketogenic diet. I understand you have to, you know, um, sacrifice a lot, which where she has reached. But the key thing is get started. Get started. And what I always tell people is don't dive into um this kind of whole fitness wellness thing um when you are blind. First, do a little bit of research, understand your body, um, get the basics of how your body functions and other kind of stuff. If you get some problems, um. If maybe you're meeting out of information here and there, you can, we are here. You can ask me, you can ask her, you can ask anybody else who have maybe um, advanced knowledge, but make sure that you at least get the basics of how your body works, how certain diets work, and all that kind of stuff. So it's really, really important. So if you are looking forward to get started, don't just you know, go into everything blindly. But you also have to understand that we have different body types. Your body type might be that might not be the same as mine, might not be the same as hers. So um, I understand you have to try out different things to really come up with something that work um, that works for you. But if that something works for you and you can sustain it for the rest of your life or many many years, please keep with it. I understand it's hard to come to that, but keep trying until you land on something that basically works for you. For sure. And there's so many different types of keto that people are successful on. So don't feel like there is just one way to do the keto diet. Like I said, there's people who do lazy keto, they do strict keto, they do dirty keto, do they do clean keto? There are people who track, there are people who don't track. You know, it, whatever works for you that can keep you successful, then definitely go that route for sure. Oh, I, I, and I'm still talking about keto. Let, let's look at, because I understand when you stop taking in sugar, when you're someone who's taking a lot of fat and maybe protein, um, are you about to, you know, suffering from certain deficiencies that you would want maybe your physician or someone else to be checking on a regular basis? Um, <clears throat> yes, so I see a cardiologist uh, because I, I was born with a heart murmur, so it was something that, I've always seen a cardiologist. And so I remember when I told her that I was doing keto, she was a little apprehensive, uh, but she was like, hey, if you're losing weight, you know, let's just keep an eye on that blood work and, you know, see you get to your goals. He goes, but when you get to your goals, I want you to ease up on your fat. Like maybe not take so much fat intake as was her point of view as my um, cardiologist. 
But I mean, overall, I've had good response from my doctors uh, about being on keto. I think there was only one doctor that just didn't know what it was and didn't like it and <laughs> did not recommend it. And it was just didn't want to learn about it. Like he was old school and in his way of thinking already and wasn't open to hearing about this new way of eating that I adopted. Um, I do have to check electrolytes. So because of, of the diet and you don't realize how much sodium is in the, these prepackaged <coughs> excuse me prepackaged things that you're used to eating that you are kind of lower in sodium now <coughs> so i make sure to salt my food with pink himalayan salt i take magnesium every night <coughs> A little tickle in my throat. Sorry. Yeah, I know. I know. Sorry about that. I know your voice isn't doing well. So um, I'm I'm actually happy that you've tried to you know, make it. Sorry. Yeah, it's me. Every time I talk, it starts to get a little uh, tickly. Um, but yes, I've had to do my supplements to kind of um replace some of the things that I'm not getting. <coughs> my husband takes potassium every day. Uh. He's just started taking it because he would feel like a flutter in his chest and he wasn't feeling great. <coughs> oh, sorry. And once okay. he was taking potassium, he felt a difference. Uh, I take magnesium every single night. It helps with muscle cramps. <coughs> oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. Um, it's okay, don't worry. But yeah, they've definitely been helpful. And those um, electrolytes wasn't something that I was familiar with in the beginning. Uh, so I didn't really pay any attention to them until pretty recently where I started going, oh, well, maybe I should make sure I'm having enough sodium or make sure I'm getting that magnesium. <coughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's really important to, you know, um, have in mind that the fact that you're restricting certain foods, you might get some deficiencies. So it's, it's, it's really important that you actually supplement, do certain levels. <laughs> Um, your calcium, your magnesium, especially the most important electrolytes. That's your potassium, your magnesium, your sodium, your calcium. Um, those best four ones, I think it's really important that you make sure that they're always kept in check, um, plus vitamin B12 as well. So you have to you know, keep doing certain lab works at certain points. So it's very, very important that you have that one at the back of your mind. Yes, and certain foods have these things in it. Like if you have avocados or spinach, like that's a really good source of potassium, you know, but if you're not eating them every single day, then you may be low on potassium. So certain things, um, your diet can definitely help in getting those um, supplements, but when you don't get them or when you don't eat them, then definitely look into supplements. And, and, and I, I, I fully understand some of them, I think um, their potassium is no more their magnesium is normal, and even when they do their lab work, everything looks so normal, but there's something we call subclinical deficiencies. I mean, the potassium is low, but you're end sick, you're doing well, you're working, but you have like a, a chronic fatigue, your performance in the gym is down, and such kind of stuff. So it basically tells that you must, you might be having a subclinical potassium defici deficiency that you actually need to you know fix. So instead of running, uh, even before you go to these supplements and all that, you can pick all the foods that are, are rich in such kind of nutrients and eat them fast. So it's important that actually most of us, the biggest population is actually deficient of certain minerals, especially potassium. I understand if you look at the idea of potassium, it's, it's a lot. And I know most of us, we actually don't meet it in our everyday diet. So it's important that you supplement it if you're really interested in getting um, adequate results. Yeah, and I heard too that you have to be very careful with potassium specifically because if you start to supplement it, you can over, over you supplement can, potassium into your and, 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 and you know potassium is the most important mineral in our body, so um, either it going down or going up can cause um, Terrible, terrible changes in your body can cause heart attacks, um, can cause a lot of muscle cramps, can get a lot of, you know, um, central nervous symptoms and such kind of stuff. So it's very, very, very important that you keep, you know, checking your electrolytes um, once in a while. 
Yes, for sure. Yes. I think we've we've said it all. Any parting shots before I let you go? No, I mean that's that's it for me. I'm still trucking along. I'm looking forward to getting back into the gym next week. And my goal is to I hit two years of being on keto this July. So if I can hit my goal weight by then, um, that would be great. And if I don't, it's not a it's not a big deal. I'll get there eventually. <laughs> I'm not sure when. It's not a race to the finish line, but uh, I know I'll get there. I just don't know exactly when it'll be. <clears throat> I mean, God. So, um, first, I, I, I must thank you for being here. I mean, it's over one hour. It's interesting. Yeah. I'm um, here for over one hour. But thanks for honoring my invitation. Oh my God, I can't wait to you know. I'm host you again, perhaps when you have hit your goal. Um, to share more about your amazing journey. But also, guys, don't forget she has a YouTube channel. It's called Ketosis Focus. So, if you really want to see all her recipes what she has gone through throughout her journey, please go subscribe to her channel. I've put that link in the description box below. Please hit it right now. Go check out her channel and see what it's all about and all that stuff. But remember to like this um, very stream. If you're watching this one after, please leave a comment, leave a like, so that we can know that you actually watched. But otherwise, guys, thanks for being awesome viewers. I'm just looking forward to you know having you again and see you in the next one. My love. Bye. <laughs>